Welcome to the Mental Fitness Podcast. Today's entrepreneurs are mental athletes that have to know about the mind and how to keep it fit. Our goal is to increase our resilience against stress and anxiety, optimize our productivity, motivation and optimism by learning about the human mind through psychology, neuroscience and human behavior. I'm your host Ozan. I'm a founder who has experienced the challenges of launching and growing a business and a keen student of human behavior over the last 15 years. I'll share with you what I know and learn. Hundreds of impactful, behavior-changing ideas are waiting to be discovered by us. Let's begin now. Hello and welcome to the Mental Fitness Podcast. In the first few episodes, we've actually designed our mental gym, the, the, the gym for the mind. And then we talk through some of the analogies. We've, we've almost uh, made, a, made a virtual tour of different uh, training stations in this gym for endurance, for learning and memory, uh, f- for cognition, for problem solving and all other areas. It was an interesting journey, but in this podcast series, I would also like to expand to different uh, areas and topics which I think are valuable for entrepreneurs, um, makers, freelancers, people who run their own business, content creators, um, or people working in startups or in tech, uh, developers, designers. Um, And at at the very central uh, topic, uh, the, the central theme almost of this is if we understand the mental models that if if we understand the brain first of all and then we understand more about our mental models then these actually give us the right kind of tools so we can survive through the hardships that is gonna inevitably come with uh the difficulties of content creation being an entrepreneur in this sense is is has quite interesting dynamics um, and, and the best way, I think, to understand that is to look at it through a lens of what people mostly do. Most people are in types of relationships where, where, they, where they are in a professional working agreement and employment agreement in which they sacrifice a certain freedom for security. Entrepreneurs, on the other hand, are different types of beasts in the sense that uh, they want more freedom and... There's a cost of that, which is sometimes less security, and that comes from a certain amount of self-trust. Um, but it also means uh, these entrepreneurs and, and, and these makers, these individuals like me, uh, potentially like yourself, uh, we have to be much more careful about knowing how to survive alone in the wilderness uh, if we have to. So, um, and survival in the physical world uh, might have to do with knowing the right skills having the right muscles having the right physical tools knowing how to use a knife and uh, um, i don't know make a tent out of three branches or whatever but in our case it is entirely different set of skills entirely different uh fundamental different way of looking at the, the mental health the the internal machine that we have running so this is about that so with that in mind, I think a central uh, tension that exists is between living in the moment, carpe diem, enjoying life, uh, being careless, nonchalant about the world, and on the other hand, being this uh, constantly anxious, uh, always focused on the future type of a person who never prioritizes momentary pleasures and always seeks long-term uh, success and I think there's a compromise between these two and I think there's a balance that we can reach and there's a way of thinking that maximizes your chance of reaching that balance I use it personally myself for the last five years and I'll share that with you towards the end of this uh, recording but before we get to that uh, let's try to define these two different categories like on the moment living living in the moment is usually associated with a sense of happiness and this is a topic uh, that many thinkers have um, elaborated and especially in terms of um, in the book flow by Mikhail Csikszentmihalyi this this was introduced this concept he, he was a psychologist and uh, this this concept is 
uh, about the, the fact that there are types of activities that take almost 100% of your attention uh, so that you cannot think about other stuff. So your mind does not wander off to other topics. And as a result of that, uh, you find yourself in the spot where, where you disassociate from, from time and uh, time just flows by itself without you realizing it. And uh, so that type of experience only happens when you have a certain skill and when you have a certain challenge and when the difficulty of that challenge matches with with, the, with with your level of skill. But these all happen in the moment. Um, another one of uh, the key topics was uh, popularized by the marshmallow experiment in which they ask children whether they would eat a marshmallow right then and there or whether they would wait for an amount of time so that they could get a second marshmallow. This was meant to measure which children were able to prioritize a potentially objectively bigger reward that will come later versus any, a, a reward that's that's uh, there. So almost the logic of a bird in the hand versus two in the bush type of a thing. Um, and the last key pillar again uh, of this is experiencing self versus remembering self uh, laid out by uh, Daniel Kahneman uh, in his research prior to his book uh, Thinking Fast and Slow but also elaborated in that book as well and it is these two sets of selves that coexist within our mind and they answer to two questions around happiness that are similar but quite different in different ways one of those questions is how do you feel right at this moment how how happy do you feel and the answer to this usually comes through our perspective of the experiencing mind um, and it looks at daily pleasures lack of pain uh, and po possibly potentially have to do with the endorphins and the dopamines and, and the serotonin within within the body circulating at that time uh, so that is the experiencing self. So if you're eating a juicy burger, the experiencing self would uh, would be in the records as as being quite quite well off. Or if you're in um, if you are at a holiday resort with your friends, that might really be high. If you're having a fantastic day, that again, the experiencing self might say th great things about how happy he or she is. The remembering self, on the other hand, answers a different question. It it answers the question. How satisfied are you with your life, or how happy about your life you are? Is is so that it's a different phrasing of a question, but it engages a different part of your brain. So it is the remembering self. And when you attempt the question, how satisfied, how happy I am with my life, then this engages a longer term thinking, and you think about your status in society, you think about your relationships, you think about your occupational success, financial success. Uh, you remember your goals and uh, how, how, how much you were able to reach them. And a, a cumulative result of these is the answer to the question, how happy you are with your life. The remembering, so, and like, with this, let's move on to the future. So the future is built through uh, the hard work of uh, almost a sacrifice of 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 the experiencing self in the moment for the benefit of the remembering self in the future so if you in in the absolute logical extremes uh if at 100 percent of the time you were uh focused on the experiencing self you would be having a good time but zero investment into the future uh in which you would be at a in a situation you could end up with no job or no relationships um, and no learning and uh, you would not be able to improve your mental library of mental models if at the opposite end of that spectrum you always invested in the remembering self and did not cut any slack to the experiencing self then it could actually be a miserable type of experience that you were always indebted to future and that payoff might never come or you might fear that it might never come. So that we need to find and establish a balance between these two. Uh, so the key idea here is to balance shorter term uh, reward in the moment and being in the moment. 
being alive without guilt from the past and without anxiety from the future to be able to exist at that moment in a mindful way. So and balance that out with the right goals and structures and and uh, working for the remembering self as well. So it's, so there's a dilemma here, and uh, I think the best way to work our way out of that dilemma is through setting smart goals, to setting the right type of goals and objectives for the future. And in my mind, this is al almost always like a train. So first of all, what you need to do is plot out the journey that you'd like to make and plot out the destination that you'd like to reach. And once you have that plotted out, decide on the checkpoints that are critical uh, for you to reach that final destination that you think. And that destination is not a static target, as we'll see, uh, because as we learn, it's a, it's a moving target, it's dynamic. What we want out of life is very different when we are 35 years old versus when we are 22 years old versus what when we are 55 years old. So, um, but that aside, uh, knowing that goal itself is going to change we still need to have a goal so once we have that goal and once we have decided uh the key points the checkpoints of of reaching that goal it is almost like putting a train on tracks putting the fuel in that train coal or electricity uh and and letting that train chug along in its in its journey towards towards this uh, destination uh, towards the, the checkpoints and towards the objective that you set out and th what this means is you have a daily structure you have daily goals you have weekly goals so you, you you essentially sit down for high quality hard work during the day and at other times of the week as well and this this almost becomes a routine uh, and, 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 and it, almost like a ritual that you go through every day and this keeps the train chugging along it, it, it puts more coal into that uh in, in, into the into the train and turns it into energy so it keeps uh, progressing towards the goal but at other times so once you have completed your daily responsibilities you have time and and resources and the energy to enjoy yourself to to, to be on the in the moment so plot the journey get on the train make the train move and then once the train has started moving you have a huge life ahead so you can enjoy yourself you can live in the moment while you are on the train and the train is moving to its destination so this is the way i always think about this so this was my philosophy on balancing the pleasure in the moment versus reward in the future and sorry about the ambulance and police noises throughout this recording. Did my best to filter them out. But today is, I think, the hottest day on record uh, in the UK. And uh, I don't know, maybe people are not used to that. Okay, um, so thank you for listening. I'll talk to you in the next one. Take care.